Hey everybody, it's Greg with Bass and Hog TV. So, first thing I'd like to say is bless all those in Houston and in Texas that are suffering uh, with the remnants of this terrible uh, ice storm and snowstorm that's that's been going all over the place these days. I mean, all down south, uh, it's been a terrible thing and I send my prayers out to all of them. Uh, here in Maryland, we've been uh, hassled by a little bit of snow and ice. Uh, it's just starting to melt. We have some more coming, uh, the weather says, next week. So, my season is getting ready to, getting ready to start. This is my uh, early spring, uh, pre-spawn, bass season. Coming up next week, March 1st, I get out there and uh, I start trying to improve my PB. So um, let's get right down to it. So first of all, please subscribe and please like, and that would be fantastic. Thank you. If you saw my first video, uh, I am going to elaborate on that just a little bit, sort of feed off of that. I spoke about spinner baits uh, first and trimming the, the skirting up, and I've had some of my buddies, my fishing buddies, uh, contact me and say, "Hey, I didn't want to, I didn't comment on the video, but you know, how exactly do you do that?" And I actually, you know, it's really simple. I actually showed a before and after picture and. I think a lot of fishermen uh, have always trimmed their spinnerbait skirts, but here, here's what I do. So, as I said in the first video, I'm a big fan of the Strike King Banshee series. You could see it right there, the spinnerbait. And this is how they usually come in the pack. In fact, this is how most spinnerbaits come in the pack. You could see this long skirt hanging down. And if you leave it like that, you know, it gets wet, like I said in the last video, it gets wrapped up, it, it really uh, hampers the uh, action of your blades. And, you know, frankly, when, when a bass hits one of my lures, uh, I want more hook in their mouth than I want skirting. So here's what I do. So what I do is I'll take a pair of scissors, um, and let's just let's just do it on this one right in the pack. It's so easy to do. So so what I do here is, and you can see that right there. I'll take a pair of scissors and kind of snip this little bit of the long tail off. And then what I do is kind of like, you know, give it a little cut there, maybe a little in here. I like to. Take a few of these, if you, if you cut them, you can see that if you, if you get into a couple of them, cut them a little shorter, they'll spike out. And uh, that's what I like to do. And I'll take a few here, cut them, and you can see, see where they spike out a little bit. Um, also a little bit in here, and I get it to spike out a little bit. And that, that gives it, um, a lot more action, I think. It's it's just kind of like creates a little a little bug, uh, so to speak, with the little spikes sticking out. And I do the same thing to my jigs, and I'll show you that also. Uh, today, I'm also going to talk about what I do to organize my tackle for the upcoming season. And I do this same thing uh, before the spring. I, the pre-spawn and the spring, I do it in the fall. Before the fall, I do it before summer. Okay, so another thing that I do when I, I, I check all my lures, I check my hooks, I check my blades, especially on the spinner baits and the um, chatter baits, I check my jigs. And here's what I do uh, first. And I don't know if you could see it, this particular spinnerbait, you could see, I don't know if you could see some of the surface rust. See it right there. Just a little surface rust there. And what I don't like to do, 
I like to take the rust off my hooks. That's what I do. And, and I take most of it off and just the surface rust. But what I don't like to do is I know a lot of uh, fishermen, they'll, they'll, they'll take their lures, they'll soak them in uh, vinegar, which I think is terrible for the lure. They, they soak it, uh, soak their hooks and the lures in uh, um, oil, some kind of oil, you know, and, and I just don't do any of that because number one, bass have a very keen sense of smell. And uh, tell you the truth, I just think when, when you soak your lures in some any kind of chemical, oil, whatever it is, you know, they're going to sense it. The fish is going to sense it and you're not going to get as many hits if, if you get any. Now, that's just me. That's what I believe. Uh, I do know it's a fact that bass do have a keen sense of smell. So what I do is I take a foul, and you can see this foul right here, and I take the flat side. Now this foul is probably about 15 years old. <laughs> and what I do is I'll, I'll, you're not gonna be able to see it that well, but I kind of just hold it up to the light and I kind of just foul it a little bit, very lightly, just try and take, you know, some of that surface rust off. Um, if you have some rust on your hook and uh, it's it's doing its thing in the water and a fish or a bass comes up to it, do they say, oh no, there's a little rust, I'm not gonna hit that lure? I doubt it. But then again, it's who wants rust all over their hooks? I know I don't. And rust has a way of uh, infecting the other lures. And I know there's a lot of bass fishermen out there that have purchased these boxes um, these plastic boxes that companies are putting out now that are rust proof. And in my opinion, I mean, that, that's good to do also. It helps. But I think the real, real, the root cause, uh, so to speak, of rust on your hooks and your lures is that, you know, you're doing a quick change, whether you're in a tournament, whether you're out bank fishing in a reservoir, doing a quick change. I don't think there's anyone that stops and says, oh, I better wipe this off before I put it back in my box and then put the new lure on. No, they just throw the, the lure back in their box and then put the new lure on and they're back to, to fishing again. That lure that you threw back in the box, closed the box up, that has, you know, some, some water on it and um, it's going to rust. And once it rusts, it's going to jump to other lures little contagious. That's what rust is. So what I do again is I just take the file and I lightly just file the rust. So after I'm done with that, I want to sharpen the hook. This is part of my organizing of these lures, of all my lures before I go out. So what I do when I sharpen the hook, I, I don't know if you're going to see this. I don't hold it up like this. This is for the video. Of course, I will lay the hook down, uh, the file down on a flat surface, hold the hook a certain way, and then I'll sharpen one side, and then I'll go ahead and I'll sharpen the other side. And then there's a little groove in this file. Again, I'm not sure if you could see that. The little groove in there, I'm kind of holding it up close. So I take the, the barb of the hook, and I run it through that groove to sharpen it. And I'll kind of, that's, that's really all you need to do. I'll kind of put it on a little angle sometimes. Then how do I check to see if the hook's sharp enough? Well, it's, I'm kind of old fashioned. So I learned this little trick way, way back, probably in the seventies, uh, maybe before that, when I was just a, a kid, started bass fishing with some older guys. And, and what they do is they taught me just to take your hook and try and glide it across, across your fingernail. Not hard, just kind of glide it. See how it's, it's hooking right in your fingernail? It's sharp. You know, and I'll test it a little bit. But if you could take that barb and slide it across your nail with no problem, it's not sharp enough. So next... I'll check the blades of, of my baits, any of the spinner baits, anything I have blades on. And I think you could see a little rust here, some scratches, some dig marks. 
uh, you know, we, these spinner baits get hung up in rocks, banging against wood, bang, banging against gravel, and eventually you're going to get the marks and the, you know, you might even bend a couple. You're, you, you know, you still, and there's rust that, that gets on these also. I don't bother following rust off of those blades. So what you want to do is you want to get yourself next time you're in a store, tackle store, or go online, get yourself a box of blades. And I have just a few blades here out of the box and you could see them right there. See those, there's a red one, it's that one. Uh, I get a, um, you know, I got a, uh, I get a blade, blades from, from the tackle store. I've got a whole box of them here. Also, when, if I got spinner baits, especially, or lures with blades that are all banged up and the lures are, and I never ever use them for some, whatever reason, I'll take the blades off and I put them in a bag, put that in a box and I'll save them. And there's always a time uh, and conditions, depending on your conditions, where I might want to do a quick switch on blades. Also, I save skirts and here are a couple skirts here. I've got a whole box of skirts. You could see that, that I put on my spinner blades, uh, spinner baits. <laughs> I switch skirts from one spinner bait to another spinner bait. And uh, that's how I save a few dollars. I mean, let's face it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not wealthy. And and the more I, I hope you continue to watch my videos and you hit the subscribe button on it, on them. But um, I you will never see me on any of my videos show big giant boxes of hundreds of lures and all these bags and everything that I've collected and all. I, I don't have the money to buy all those lures. I, I save a little bit of money during the off season. I go buy whatever lures I need, but generally I try and extend the life of the lure. So that's why I file these hooks because I don't take a lure and I see all the rust and go, ah, oh, I'll just throw it away, get it, spend another $8 on another spinnerbait. No, I don't do that. I, you can extend the life of these lures. Now, comes with a little warning. You really foul these, foul the surface rust off the hooks a few times, maybe before the pre-spawn, then again, you know, uh, before the summer, and then next year. So three or four times a year for two years. But then after that, you have to be very, very careful because eventually if you foul it too hard, uh, if you're too rough with it with a foul, you're going to ruin the integrity of the hook. And at that point, um, in other words, there's going to be a point where you're going to look at your hook and say, you know, I filed this half a dozen times. I got to get another lure. But it, filing them and taking the rust off does help to extend the life of the lure. And if you're anything like me, you don't want a box full of rusty lures and rusty hooks and rusty spinnerbait blades. So the next thing I do to organize is I take all my hooks. Now, I'm a big fan of owner hooks. I've, I've been a fan of owner for years and years, um, at least for my worm hooks. And uh, I label, as you can see, that's 2-0. I wrap a rubber band around them, nothing fancy. If the rubber band breaks one day, I put another one on, 4-0. <laughs> I've got trailer hooks wrapped up, different sizes. They're number twos, by the way. Five O's. You can see three O hooks here. So I do that as, uh, as part of organizing. Um, the one thing I don't do, and I would not advise anyone there at home to do this, taking a file and trying to file rust off of a treble hook on any of your any of your lures. Here's a square bill. I replace my treble hooks now. If if you want to know uh, my top five spring lures, you can check my other video. I do talk about replacing treble hooks, but the way I replace these is I have two I have two sets 
of what's called split ring pliers. This particular set, I don't know if you could see it. You could see right here, this bottom lip is very small. That slips into the small split rings and can open them up and twist those treble hooks off. Then this one is a larger pair of split ring pliers. And you could see it's got a little bit bigger lip on the bottom, a little bit bigger uh, point on the top there. And that's for the larger split rings. There are videos out there. Just, uh, just go ahead and look for how to change treble hooks or how to change skirts. Um, you can go ahead and there's a lot of videos out there and they'll show you um, how to do all that. Um, I, I'm not going to go into a modification video here because I'll be taking another hour of your time and, and I don't want to do that. Okay, so what's next? Um, by the way, on taking rust off of your hooks, you can also use sandpaper. Sometimes I do that. Um, it's not quite as rough, you know, on, on these. It's a little bit lighter and that, that's a big help too. The sandpaper will take some of that surface rust off. And again, I'm only talking about surface rust. If you have deep rust pits in your hooks and your lures, trash them. You're better off doing that, going and get another lure. And I understand the, these lures today are expensive, but rather than soaking them in oil and soaking them in vinegar and all that, it's, you know, if you have a damaged lure, you have a damaged lure, you might as well get a new one. So, Chatterbaits, I do the same thing with the chatterbait as far as trimming them up. You know, I just like to trim my skirts. So I'll take, and I'll just take a little here. See how it's, see how that spikes up real fast? And then uh, I'll take a little there, spike it up a little bit. Uh, I might trim a little bit off the bottom there. So I've got it all uneven everywhere. It kind of makes it look like a little bug. And it's a little bit different. Uh, gives the lure a little bit uh, more uh, action to it. And I do that to all my chatter baits and all my skirts. So, the jigs. I'll do the same thing with my jigs. And you can see that I did one here. I take it and I just... See how it spikes up? I like to just trim it a little in different spots. Just crazy, right? But I like to do it and I think it really does help as far as uh, increasing the strikes on these skirted lures. Now, on the treble hooks, back to the treble hooks, um, I use these VMC I don't know if you can see them, the VMC treble hooks. And uh, I've got a whole box of these, like a shoe box full. And I replace treble hooks anytime I need to replace them. And like I said, I pretty much replace them at least every year. Okay, so uh, the next thing is I'll take my trailers. Now, I keep most of my trailers uh, in their original bags. I mean, I do. And, and I have to go back and say that's probably um, the most that I keep in a box. I got a shoe box full of bags. But I also, to help budget, save these trailers. So, at the end of the season, so at the end of spring, I'll look at some of these trailers before I go into my summer organizing, and I'll see the ones that are ripped, a little tear in, in the tail of one, uh, or something like that. I'm just going to, I'm not going to show you my whole giant box of them, but I just have a little bag here, and what I do is I put them in a little past plastic bags, and you can see that, and I mark them. And if I can, during the off season in the winter, 
because I'm not a winter fisherman. Um, if I can save some of these and put them in molds, sort of remold them, I'll do that. And that is just a uh, the way I save some money and budget because, uh, like I said, I don't go out there and um, go crazy with buying this lure and that lure. I just can't afford to do that. And I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there like me that don't just buy boxes of lures every year. And you do see it a lot where fishermen have, they're going to show these big boxes of lures they just got, you know, in the mail. And, and that's not me. Okay. Um, so I think that's it. I hope this helped. And again, please subscribe, please subscribe, please like, and I will be back soon. Uh, the next video is probably going to be outdoors. So talk to you later. See ya.